Casey, what a day. I mean, you know, this is the day that broke the world. I mean, it's such a huge day, which is, as we know, the two huge things coming out today, which is New York. Yeah, two huge things and and one bigger than the other. Well, first, it's it's the Casey Wilson book Pub Day. They call it Pub, Pub Day, Day, right? And that is not the thing I'm talking about as the biggest thing. <laughs> That takes a backseat. It is a minor note in this symphony. Danielle, the book did come out yesterday. I'm not going to say one more word about it except thank you. Thank you. Thank you to everyone who bought it and posted about it. I'm even getting people who read it last night at midnight and are writing and loving it and are so sweet. Thank you to our listeners. Thank you to you, Danielle, for being so generous and promoting it as though it were your own. But it is. It's such a great book. And I mentioned quite a lot in it, so it might as well be my own. Don't think I didn't take it on selfishly. <laughs> That's what you love about it. I do. Um, but I'm so happy that my Housewives chapter, which is really a love letter to you all, it is about you all. And by you all, I mean our listeners, is being published in the hollowed halls and pages of Vanity Fair. Wow. And I do feel like the bitch sesh listenership is responsible for that. So I owe so much gratitude and thanks for anyone that bought the book or the audiobook. And look, I don't want to lie, it is currently number one on the Amazon um, bestsellers list for autobiographies. That's a huge deal. Who are you in front of? A book about Jesus and God is two. Okay. And Give Them Lala is four. You know what, Jace? Casey, that feels right. Did you almost call me Jesus? <laughs> I almost said JC. Jesus Christ. Well, that's right as well. I'm it above just feels Jesus. Like Casey, Jesus, <laughs> Lala. That feels right. That feels to right. Me. Uh, I'm just so grateful to you, Danielle, and to Adam Pally, and to Z-Way, and to Kristen Wiig, uh, and my father, Paul Wilson, of course. And also um, to June Diane for our oh, for our talk last week. Now, I know... Okay, you guys, we did a live show last week. If you didn't see it, all I can say is that's on you. And I'm, and I'm not... I'm sorry, but also not, because we were given ample warning. But the and show you has missed, to Danielle... <laughs> It was a shock. Now, look, when we do these shows, we always like to deliver a little something special. Uh, A lot lot of something special. It is not just us sitting there shooting the shit. No, it's not a regular podcast. We, you know, we've done things where we had Casey surprise me with the artist that did that terrible cartoon Mm. of me in one show. Another show, I was on a sex swing. Yes. And this show. All these things have happened. And this week alone. You know, I did gift you, if I may say, with a cameo from Mama D, and I, I gifted June with a cameo from both Christine and Janelle of Sister Wives. They gave us nothing in those, but that's okay. And Gia gave you a beautiful cameo, too, to thank you for promoting my book. But what we really did was... What we really sank into <laughs> had nothing to do with the damn book. This, we had... Someone gave us a boot on the ground, mm-hmm. basically, and it was not about the housewives this time. No, it wasn't, Danielle. Because the housewives, you said, hey, we need some we need some boots on the ground about bad behavior. Yes. Just, you know, as the housewives, like, I saw Lisa Vanderpump in a Gelson's and she was rude to me. That's what we normally get, although we got an insane one about Craig Conover. Oh, that was insane. Yeah, oh, let's not God. even go there right now. It was so upsetting and insane. But. Involving a blowjob in small claims court. Go on. <laughs> But a woman reached out to you, Danielle, about not about a housewife, no, about someone said, else. Who I have some bad, bad behavior, behavior, and that is from Miss Casey Rose Wilson, and mm. it come from a friend of not Casey's, but a friend of a woman that felt scorned by Casey, which was that a rightfully so. Well, but Casey had, in this woman's words, not in mine, but in this woman's words, stolen this woman's boyfriend back in high school. That's right. Stolen and again. I did. Well, and there was some overlap, and nobody wants to hear that. But you and June really drilled down on that in the show that there was, in fact, overlap. So I'm not here to tell a lie. No. I was here for healing, and this woman asked to come on the show and confront me. Yeah. So we had her on the show, and then we absolutely had... <laughs> we had. <laughs> well, she wanted to come on and tangle and yeah. confront me, and I was so ready for a healing moment. I wanted to, of course, apologize to this lovely woman, but June for what was happened. Not- <laughs> June was not having it. Now, Danielle, you were as gracious as always. As and, always. But... And I'm going to say one thing about you, Danielle, in this show, because I'm seeing it right now. <laughs> oh, no. Which is that the three of us, June and you and me, all showed up in various ways, energetically and visually yes. for the people. <laughs> June Diane was in lighting that I think has only been given to Jane Fonda and Lily Tomlin on Grace and Frankie. She looked like she was on TV. Like she looked like she had gone like gorgeous, like spend some money. Had gone, yes, she was bathed. Yeah. 
in light. Yeah, I've never seen anything like it, right? And Casey had been like lighting designed, like Casey. Mini, but I was on, the, I was still medium. You know, it's like the three bears. I was mama bear. Yes, yeah, so you had sort of choreographed the room or like decorated the room with like a painting and the bat. Like, you was trying really... to give the people something to look at in the nook that I was sitting in. Yes. Now, you know, for a, for a show. I last minute realized that in my frame was my treadmill. Mm. And, and it wasn't in your frame, Danielle. It was the center of the frame and you were sitting <laughs> off to the side. I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> didn't know that. Oh, I thought... sorry if you're hearing hairspray, everyone. I'm also getting hair. She's getting hair, hair makeup, makeup <laughs> <laughs> While we talk, guys, things are happening this week. I'm Look, sorry. Things have gone crazy. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. Go on. So anyway, I'm watching this happen. Um, but so, and so last minute and I threw a red towel over the treadmill in order to sort of hide it from the viewers. I thought this will make this it was, right. This was a red towel that had a huge hole in it. <laughs> and you didn't throw it over the treadmill, Danielle. You threw it sh- kind of askew Hap-hazard. over the handlebars. Yes. <laughs> Haphazard. You were blown out from behind, from the yes, light behind light. you. Look, it's a new house. I'm not uh, set up lighting wise. I'm no. not sure where I'm at. No, but you looked absolutely stunning. And we got so many comments on your beautiful toned arms. But which we saw why they were toned because prominent in your frame was a huge treadmill. Was a huge treadmill. And so this <laughs> <laughs> ah, that you tried to hide that genuinely in your brain, you're like, no one will see this. No, I, I just drape this, a towel. It, people just think it's a red sort of piece in the background. Like they won't see it. A they red won't sculpture. Yeah, they won't know what they're looking at. And that's fine. It's so in the background. Well, people did know, Danielle, because there's a comments, there's a chat going on. And I would say thousands, because there were thousands of people there immediately was all they could see and talk about. Was... The red towel. That's right. And so this all relates back because when this girl, Allison, again, I thank her and her friend Elizabeth for 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 suggesting this. When they came on, we were jokingly saying this was going to be our version of Red Table Talk with Jada Pinkett Smith, your favorite show, Danielle. Uh I love it. That she does with her daughter and her mom where they have the most uncomfortable things uh, anyone could talk about within their family, just like they're working it out at the red table. And one glorious viewer dubbed it Red Towel Talk. And so this Red Towel Talk is now going to be, I believe, a feature on our show. Our next live show, which will be June 24th, um, we will be doing be... an Americana show, Danielle, yes, all about all about the housewives our of love America. and hate of America <laughs> as they relate to the housewives. Don't worry. It is a July 4th show. Yeah, a little earlier than July 4th. But no it's... theme is too narrow for us, Danielle. Oh, for sure. And I will. Yeah. I do want to bring some people to the Red Towel. Yeah, and whether they be confronting me, because you know I've got more skeletons. Oh, you have a whole. So if someone has some bad bad behavior from one of us, we'd love to hear it. Because in a way, I felt it was healing. It's like most times, you know, people are hurt, and you go on in your life, and there's no resolution. Uh Now I don't know that we got resolution, Danielle. Because here comes Allison. She comes out. We discuss what happened. June Diane was so uncomfortable. She was screaming. She turned around. Her head was just in her mic the whole time. Yes, she was very upset. But then I had a little something up my sleeve, Danielle. Yes. Sure I decided, look, if we are doing this Jerry Springer S segment, I'm going to call my old boyfriend, Chris, who I haven't spoken to in upwards of 15 years. And I got him to come out and surprise Allison and give his version of the story and apologies. And my friend Amanda, who's a therapist, who says she has witnessed all manner of thing as a therapist, said it was the most uncomfortable thing she's ever <laughs> seen. And she's been a marriage counselor, Danielle. Now, I am seemingly un very comfortable in the uncomfortable because as you are yeah because as uncomfortable as i was i was titillated in a way that i've mm-hmm. never been before i was yeah. truly laughing from the bottom of my being um and i think that's how i deal with uncomfortable but you situations. were very gracious to our guest danielle i was june someone was not <laughs> But I feel like I want June on the next Red Towel Talk because she's willing to say the things that I am not. She's willing to come out Oh, swinging. yeah. She's willing to be the voice of the people, if you will. Although, who yeah. knows where the people who said... There was no sides, really. I was apologizing profusely. But June felt you did not need to apologize. So no, she, she did feel that. And she kept screaming, why is my friend apologizing for being a bright light and for someone picking her? I'm sorry. <laughs> it, it was... Truly the most upsetting and uncomfortable thing I've ever... It's like you want your friend to defend you, but not at, in that way. I was laughing so hard. And I have to say, it was like our own episode of The Real Housewives. It was beautiful and perfect. And well, and let's just say there was one more guest, Danielle. 
which is as I'm doing this, you oh, all yes. know my husband's never even heard the podcast, but he was watching upstairs. You know, in his bed, of course, uh-huh. watching it. And all of a sudden, I hear a banging on my door. <laughs> I'm downstairs, a frantic banging during this. And my husband, who is camera averse, he is shy. Ne- he doesn't comes- have any social media at all. None. Wants no footprint. Comes barreling into frame, yelling, Allison, I know how you can get back at Casey. Meaning having sex with like him. Like, basically, get with me. That's the only way. <laughs> it's the only way out of this. It was a wild experience. Surprises, twists and turns. Yeah, twists and turns I've never felt in my life. And I'm still in the throes of it. We all are. So I guess I want to say, Danielle, look, do I want to be confronted again by my past? No. But I'm going to extend this to you, Danielle. If anyone feels you've wronged them, please write to us. And if anyone just has someone they want us to confront on your behalf mm-hmm. or healing you, you think can be can be done in our next live let's show. take it to the red towel we'd love to hear from you and we'll go ahead and organize the players we will mediate again june might say things that you don't want to hear but we'll take it to the red towel we That's feel right. like it's important so but now danielle we have a shorter show so we need to get to our guest yeah, we do because wowza us before. He's a star. star? I would just like to say he's a writer. He has written for everybody's favorite show, The American Office. Yep. Everyone's favorite show. He's a television writer and producer, if I may. He's so hilarious. He's a friend of mine that I've gotten to know this year. And for you to, to make a friend in the pandy, you know, it's like those friends are with you for life. You know, he's just been by my side making me fucking laugh. He's also a showrunner. He's a showrunner on the new show uh, Central Park. Let's not forget about that. He worked on carpoolers. He went to UVA. So, you know, we have a connection there in terms of Virginia. He is funny as all hell. He's a huge Housewives fan. He reminded us he actually won a costume contest at one of our live shows back (laughs) when humans were allowed to see each other. Please welcome my friend, the hilarious and I might add gorgeous Halstead Sullivan. (laughs) Thank you. Hey Casey. Hi. Hostage. Yeah. What a treat. I've I'm I'm so happy to have a past winner, a past Tariq uh from 90 Day Fiance in our midst. <laughs> and huge fan. I have been a dedicated listener for three years. So it's so exciting to actually be on the podcast. And welcome to this side of the aisle. Yeah. Yeah. I have to thank you for like reigniting my love of Potomac. Oh, I tried so it early. Good. You guys said go back and you know so so good so good thank you so much halstead we we were in a situation recently i won't give the details of but there we were outside there was more people than ever should be possible there was a franticness in the air i won't get into the situation and you turned to me and said one of the funniest things i've ever heard and you said it's like a filings basement dressing room here <laughs> <laughs> one thousand, one thousand. Oh my and God. As a child that grew up going to Filene's basement with her grandmother, when Casey told me that comment, I split my pants. I was like, because I used to like, my grandmother like would be babysitting me. And she would, if there was a Filene's basement sale, forget it. I, and then I would have to go into the dressing room there and watch a bunch of elder women because there were no uh, shimmying out of their big panties. Yeah, like just there were no dressing rooms. You just, and I was shimmying out of my own big panties. So that's no disrespect. It but was it's a shock as a child to see elder women like just with their bosom out. And I'm the so same. Never <laughs> I feel, feel like it imprinted on me. I lived in Boston until third grade. My mother used to take me to filing's basements. So I was marched into the <laughs> not even in the dressing room. They're just in the aisles. Like, oh, they don't care. They don't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah. People like pulling over a size 11 long boots. Yeah. yeah. Um, Hall said, Tell us about your relationship to Housewives, specifically New York, because as we all know, we didn't say this, Danielle, but the major thing that happened on May 4th was the the Roni premiere. Here we are. It was premiere day, premiere night. True. And I wanted it to overshadow my book. And it was, I think it really delivered. What's your relationship to New York Housewives? Been a huge fan since the beginning. I, I It's probably my favorite franchise by far. Um, okay. You know, big fan of Luann. Ramona, I, <laughs> Ramona, I have a love hate relationship with, but um, you know it's very interesting because I like Dorinda, I love, but I was asking myself at the end of the first episode, do I actually miss Dorinda right now? No, only because now that Ebony's there, it's giving her a chance to breathe as opposed to mm-hmm. coming into a really tight clique of women who have like tons of history. It feels like it's a little bit of fr- fresh air right now, and it's not so much this solid wall of, you know. 
white people of aunties, <laughs> let's say of aunties yes now we have two nieces i yes. feel like to borrow from atlanta you're so right with leah and ebony do you believe it's taken 13 seasons in the most diverse city on earth to have a black cast member it's pretty shocking it, it's totally shocking to me and then i was watching the dallas um reunion and i was like is it even more shocking that Dallas is the most diverse of all the housewives right now, you know, considering like you have LA and New York, but yeah, it was, it was great to see Ebony and she's like perfect because she seems to fit into the group. I have to say I've been the Ebony at many ev- an events and, <laughs> you know, it's interesting to see the housewives dealing with her and, you know, Sonia talking about her oh. fish. <laughs> Halstead, as the as the ebony, has anyone ever shown you their dirty koi fish pond and related it to race? The, not the koi fish pond, but I remember I was at an upper. I used to live in New York. That's the other thing. I was at an Upper East Side Oscar party, and this was back when Lion King: Circle of Life was uh, nominated. Mm. Sitting at a party, you know, eating off silver and you know fine china, and as that song is being performed, someone turns to me is like Halstead. Do you know what tribe in Africa your family's from? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, but like Ebony, you roll with it, you move on, and you know, enjoy the party. But you don't forget. Maybe we'll take you and that person to the red towel. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I don't know why. I thought the first blow would come from Ramona, as we all suspected. Like the first kind of awkward, terrible, slightly racist thing would come from Ramona. We all assumed it. So to have it come in through through Sonia's coys yes. was a shock yes. to the system. No one saw that coming. Although it really did make me laugh when Ebony comes back with their also body positive. It's also a body positive <laughs> fish fish. All sizes, all sizes. All sizes. She's like, you've got a fat fish, you've got a thin fish. <laughs> I, I mean, it was wonderful to behold. <laughs> wonderful. Uh, well, Sonia was at least trying, she, like in her own awkward way. And if it wasn't Sonia, it'd be more offensive. But you know, I, 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 I feel. I feel for Sonia. Like she can't catch a break. Century Twenty One. <laughs> that century when when Century Twenty One went under, we all knew Sonia was in trouble because that was the last like <laughs> string of life she had been holding on to. So I think, exactly. as much as it was a blow for New York, you know this New York institution, Century Twenty One, I it was really a blow for Sonia Morgan. Yeah. Speaking of Filene's, I mean, and that was a blow. It did hurt my heart to hear Sonia say, I can't catch a break. It made me feel sad. But meanwhile, you she know. is saying it from a $10 million penthouse in the middle of New right. York. That, so. That's still for rent. <laughs> With, <laughs> still for rent. With so many interns around her during COVID, I just want to say my assistant, my lovely assistant, Kim, has not been in my home in over a year. We like communicate through a plastic bin out front. <laughs> <laughs> and just like pass things on and off to each other. Like to see the amount of assistance we've got. Lou's got a new gal. To see all the assistants there. We know Ramona still apparently has her full staff working. And I know everyone can do whatever they want. It was just a bit of a shock to see all the interns parading in and out yeah. during a global pandemic. Also, what she's teaching them, she's like, you can't learn these skills in in an <laughs> office. Like loading the dishwasher. Yeah. <laughs> like, preparing a bath yeah. as if that these are skills that these people aren't learning in their homes like these are these are skills that they've learned the best is being late to your party to hose off the deck it's like oh only i know how to do this you have to get the dirt off the stone but not the edges it's like oh i got it <laughs> like i could take those from her at that moment yeah. <laughs> like it's not rocket science no guys at this juncture, I have to take an uncomfortable pause, which is that my hair person, Catherine, is going to have to throw a little dry shampoo. She's told me that my bangs look, quote, greasy. So we're just going to pause for a little sound of dry shampoo. Okay. Just everyone hold for two <laughs> this seconds. This is why. We've done this with June and her manicures and pedicures, but we've never done full hair and makeup as we've... Uh... <laughs> I actually think it's been quieter than June's manicures. <laughs> well, June's manicures came with filing. It's just, it's hard to have to get dry shampoo too it's like it's an insult to injury thank you well i've okay. used it every day a dry shampoo sure um now can we also talk about just our intro back into the city of new york you know like the dramatic opening of like bustling hustling new york city and then it looking like you know i am legend where nothing <laughs> was happening and sort of like just that very dramatic uh intro i enjoyed because it felt like okay this is where we're at yes and then three nose jobs in the first 30 seconds ah! <laughs> <laughs> like, 
three nose jobs, 27 boob jobs and a boxing lesson mid pandemic. It was what well, thank you for bringing that up. First of yeah. all, Leah did not have some big honker. So for that, that, that mush faced man to say anything about her face. <laughs> <laughs> that smushed man. <laughs> that smushed indented man. I mean, I guess it's smart in a way. It's like, I guess I'll recover when better, I guess, to recover from a boob job than a pandemic. Yeah, that feels like the right time. I feel like Leah looks very, I mean, I think it was good work. What do you guys think? It seemed like slight, but to me, I never saw an issue with it at all. So that's what was kind of a bummer. I personally loved how she looked. I don't like a perfect tweaked little nose. Like that's, I maybe because I don't have one myself. You know what I mean? Like, so I like a little bit of character in the face. So I thought she was so gorgeous and beautiful being sort of perfectly imper, you know what I mean? So I didn't like it. The same reason I don't like Gia Giudici's nose job. You know what I mean? I loved her little face before. I love, um, I I think it's so beautiful when people don't have little tweaked, perfect noses. Again, but whatever you need to do to feel better about yourself, I'm for it, obviously. Exactly. And did you see her Chiron? She added Cristofaro to her last name, which is her the hut, the father of her daughter's last name, which I don't think no. was there. Oh, no, I, I did not. I see did that. not see that at yep. all. What an eye. She added the name and then now she's converting to Orthodox. Well, that Judaism. was a shock. Can we talk about this <laughs> conversion? OK, is she converting to Orthodox or is an Orthodox rabbi doing it for her? Catholicism. Now, you don't see that every day. You would see it necessarily, you know, sometimes if you're married. Into- well, that's what I was shocked at, because usually you're you're doing it for a reason of like marriage, kids. But to a pandemic, I, I didn't I, I didn't know that, that. But as a Jewess, mm-hmm. Danielle, did it warm your heart? It kind of warmed mine. I, it made me feel guilty because I'm a Jewess and that's what we do. Um, so I felt like, oh, no, am I did I not call enough upon my Judaism during these trying times? Like, should I dove in more? Should I get my own Orthodox rabbi? I did start watching Schnitzel during <laughs> just that count. I know that watching a program, Danielle, is going to rival an actual commitment to the faith. I was unorthodox, and I know oh, she's I love that. Hasidic, but it's like, it's it's very Leah to go all in. Yeah. Like, if, if yes. she's going to do it, she's going to just go all in. I really like the friendship between Leah and Ebony. I mean, it seems like a fait accompli. And now to see it, I just like it. I've been spending a lot of time on Ebony's Instagram kind of recounting and just really getting into their friendship, which seems very, very cute. Um, I really like a lot. Ebony gave me a lot of pearls in this mm-hmm. episode. And I just I wrote down a wrote, wrote down a few Love to hear what you wrote down. I mean, in the in the right off the bat, we we see Ebony and um, when they were in the car and Ebony's like, yeah, you know, I. I'm not used to going to the Upper East Side or something like that. And Leah's like, do you think these women have ever met a black woman? And then what did she see? She goes, Ebony turns herself and goes this, kind of like her body and herself. She goes, serves everywhere. (laughs) (laughs) This, And then she goes, she'll see it and believe it. This was one of my, this was my favorite Ebony comment that I had to write down. I will take a doo-doo bitch because I'm a human being and I ate. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Wonderful. She was talking about dating and shitting in a guy's apartment. Yeah. And I really appreciate it. She also said, my golden ambition is to dominate the world. And later, COVID made us tell the truth. Yes, that was great. And I, this is what I love. Finally, it's a new housewife who's being introduced, who is acknowledging that she's watched the show. <laughs> you know, she hasn't met Ramona, but she knows everything about Ramona. Right. She knows everything about Sonia. And it's not this weird, like, charade like oh i know nothing about this group and i'm just meeting everyone for the first time it's like no she (laughs) she has everyone's number there oh she does right which is so refreshing because it is so weird it's like of course you've seen every single fucking episode yes yeah and i also was very uncomfortable by ramona being like i feel a connection to you i was like ramona (sighs) you're a, a junk (laughs) <laughs> junk bag of a human. She just is. Junk bag with a new beachy wave. Yeah. But if you're a fan of the show, she was smart to be like, I feel a connection to you too. <laughs> you know, <laughs> your enemy's closer. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, that she dates rich men, but at the same time, she's not afraid to take a doo doo in their house. Yes. And also, yeah. she talked about her credit. Do you know what I mean? Like, she feels very real and not gold diggery in that sense. Well, she was talking about being in your 20s, all of us in our 20s who are just trying to get by and making bad decisions and how she would park different places around the city <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> to not get her car repossessed. 
I just, I love the candor, the honesty, and the laughs she's already giving us. And showing up, and I read she said in an interview, like, for the scene when she was in Central Park with um, Leah. Leah, and she was wearing a Central Park Five hoodie, and she's like, if you're going to ask, if production's going to ask me to film in Central Park, I'm going to bring with me a Central Park Five hoodie, which I thought was awesome. Yes. And she just seems fun. Like, I think we're going to get some game behavior. The trailer for what's to come makes me die laughing. 1,000%. She's tweaking (laughs) on the wall. (laughs) (laughs) When she is, when Ramona is stumbling up the stairs in what seems to be yet another fucking uh, roaring Uh 20s party murder mystery. No No more murder mysteries. Nobody wants it when they're there. And you certainly don't want to fucking watch it later. It's like we're hearing someone's dream. You don't give a fuck. Or like their drug hallucination. But seeing Ramona go up the stairs going drunk. What happens to class and dignity? (laughs) Well, she also had another brilliant remark, which is she wanted to wear a white suit in October. So she says, I Googled that you can wear all white all year round. Like, I love that that was a Googleable thing for her, that that she needed the research and to prove it. And to see her and Luann, who's now their best friend, to see them show up in both of them in those crisp white pantsuits <laughs> together just made me laugh. No one knows where the entrance is to anything. I, what do you make of this friendship, Paul Stead? Um, I feel like with... Dorinda out of the picture, they're making an alliance. It's like Survivor. Wow. <laughs> you know, it's like, we don't know what this year is going to hold. So, you know, let's the old guard band together. Um, I also think we should call it the biggest lie in the show, which is Luann saying that she accidentally realized Tom's apartment is <laughs> across from her. Like, there's no way. I, I live in LA. Anytime I'm more than 10 feet in the air, I'm looking to see if I can see my own house. Like, she used to live with Tom. She was married she to used to live there. She, she lived, there. lived there. They showed footage of her walking her little multi poo around the p- patio. <laughs> like, that was so insane. That's How- insane. To have a view of your ex-husbands who did you dirties back porch from your that is yeah. yeah bananas even if you can't see the house or if you could see one window it's like i don't need that energy to see that light just to see the light coming <laughs> yeah. or to see another woman like missy or whoever he's dealing with that day out missy. on the patio how oh I, you know she's gonna watch she is gonna totally gonna watch tom taking women from behind over that balcony <laughs> I mean, oh. we are dealing in a woman who is beyond the beyond. Do we think Lou is going to stay on the wagon this season? No, 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 no. Halstead? I, 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 I will say yes. Really? Because she has been, there's a couple of times coming back to sobriety and I feel like the first time was court ordered. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't her choice. And this time it is her own choice. She also immediately reached out to Leah for support. You know, she's. It's true. She's owning it on, you know, on national televisions. Um, so I, I, I wish hope for the best. And also like seeing how she's thinking about the parties, like it's going to be tough. Do you know what I mean? Like she's at least. Yes. A- I literally can, can anyone think of a harder gauntlet to go through when you are, you know, newly sober? I, I, I do tip my hat to this cabaret star because, and to Leah, I just cannot imagine a more stressful situation where even watching the women, I'm like, I need a drink. Yeah, 1000%. Now, can I say something? And I don't want to be judged for this, but I'm just going to say it because this is a safe space and I want the best for these women. Okay. Okay. I worry. What are we going to have if Leah and Lou aren't drinking? And I'm sorry to say that. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Again, don't judge me. I'm just putting that out there. I wrote that down. It is- <laughs> but then later in the episode, they flashed to all the drunkenness and like how crazy it was. And I forgot last year was the most debauched revelry animal house. It was it, it was beyond, mm-hmm. you know, and even Dorinda was not even the worst part of that. No. So, no, see, I rather an alcohol problem than an anger problem, because that's where we went off the rails with Dorinda was was all the anger. Right. And I believe me, Danielle, I think the same thing every time. And I and you made me take this line out of my book, Danielle. So I'm going to put this on. You. Okay. How dare you? <laughs> 
I sent Danielle my book. I said anything like, so I cannot say. And she's like, I, I really don't think you should keep the line that I want my housewife circling the drain of addiction, but not on the wagon yet. <laughs> <laughs> I love and I, I, I think you were right. I, I like think you were right. You are more of a figure than I am. Nobody gives a shit what I say, but I think people care what you say. It's a hard thing to say, you know, and I support all these women, but I'm a, a part of me is like, if you do want to to behave too well, just please leave the show. Yeah. If you're living your best life, you shouldn't be on the show. Sorry. You know, I need to see, again. I want some skeletons in that closet that you're yeah, fighting. But that being said, like Candy is living her best life. Candy is yes. the flip side of Sonia. Every business Candy touches turns to gold. She has loves her family. She mm-hmm. loves her husband. But she brings us Bolo. You know, Candy brings <laughs> us, Candy, sometimes yeah. we're like, oh, is Candy boring? Is she? But she brings us Bolo. Because Candy's a producer. Candy knows what will entertain and what the people want. Now, look, certainly we have housewives that don't drink and are still a ton of fun. So I'm hopeful for Leah. Yeah. Yeah. It's like Tanya coming up and being super drunk. Like, I, I, that just makes me cringe. <laughs> Maybe not in a good way. No. Well, Sonia is such a sad case that I don't necessarily want her drunk because I want she is circling the drain like and I don't want her to go down it like I worry I worry about Sonia yeah. Sonia Rita yeah. I, I can't help it. guys isn't it Sonia I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to jump in here well I I do the the countess's pronunciation which is Sonia mm-hmm. okay I, I appreciate your both your formal, uh, sophisticated approach. And, and we we passed something with Sonia, and that is, first of all, Casey, I've read the first two chapters of your book, and I absolutely love it. And oh, last night, it, I don't want to give too much away, but Casey loves bats. And, you know, we saw Sonia yes. talking on the phone from the bath with uh, Leah in the bath. And, oh, <laughs> and see... Like, Sonia was a little too excited about seeing Leah in the bathtub. <laughs> like, it's sort of like, it, it's not that much of a coincidence, but. Now, I'm going to say something. And of course, I like to be in about 20, 24-7 or in bed. But seeing Leah answer the phone in the bath, like, we all know they know that someone's going to call them. I do feel Leah is in a, and I say this as someone, if you've been monitoring my press tour, who's in the same exact position. And I think we're the same age. And maybe this is, I hope it's okay to say. There's a bit of a midlife crisis happening with her sexuality and just wanting to fucking put it out there. There's just something that I do find with her of like, I'm a little like, did you have to get in the bath? Look, I can see from your blank faces you don't agree. (laughs) No, no. I. It it seems like she's at least trying to move on from her ex, which she might have still had been pining for. But she's also still with Pita Chip, which was a, you know he seemed like a really bad guy. Like when someone takes your nude hot picture and sends it to a friend and you catch them, that's a bad, that's bad, I think. What is anyone fucking expecting someone's going to do with those photos? Well, to keep it to himself to masturbate to. <laughs> <laughs> right, like a gentleman. Like a gentleman caller of old. <laughs> Honestly, if someone sent a photo, I'd be like a little flattered that they liked it. But again, I know it's a, it's a violation. <laughs> it is, I've never, can I tell you, I've never sent a nude picture. Not one. I'm the, I'm the same. <laughs> <laughs> no one's really asked me. You know, I, I had one gentleman who made me make a, a video, which was, it had great production value, but. <laughs> That's nice. Like ultimately. June's, like June's production value. It wasn't like June's production value. <laughs> and I'm sure there was a treadmill that had been unused in the background, but that that's it. Only that one person. And I tip my hat to him too. Yeah. So yeah. thank you if you're out there. I'm glad that there's something. Yeah. Should we take a little break, Danielle? Yes, please. And come back with some Atlanta. Yeah. We're back. One last question for both of you on New York. Do we have a season, Halstead? Is there going to be a season for New York? Yeah, like, are, are we going to, is it going to take us and carry us all the way through? Oh, uh, by far, by far. Like, there's there was so much that I'm looking forward to. A lot of it was from the same party, <laughs> but I, I think it's, it's going to be, I think it's going to be a good season. But I'm sure they'll stretch that party over four oh. episodes. I mean, if we're not going to be in the Berkshires, where are we going to be? The Hamptons? Yeah. Uh, Perhaps Sag Harbor. At least we won't be in upstate New York at Lou's house. <laughs> That's old. So. That's, yeah, that, that, that just <laughs> tiny little round house. Yeah. I'm appreciating we're going to Salem. Yes. the witch. That feels fun to me. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'm excited. And Danielle, do you miss Dorinda? I'm going to say something. At the beginning, it felt a little empty because we also had not met Ebony yet. So we were just dealing with our uh, 
our original sort of ladies or our older ladies from seasons past. And I was like, and they flash back to Dorinda for a second. And I was like, uh oh, I kind of miss her. And then the minute Ebony came on, I forgot all about Dorinda. So I don't think I'm going to. It was a it was a quick flash, but then I got some new energy inserted in there that I was okay. liking. I didn't even think of her one time wow. until Halstead, you brought her up. I will say I got my fill of Dorinda recently from her new Nutrisystem ads yeah. that she's doing with Marie Osmond and um, the wife on um, Chris Lee knows, Chris Lee knows <laughs> that. It's a real threesome. Dorinda is not an actress. She's like, I love Nutrisystem. If we know anything from their old car commercials with her and Sonia, we know her. She's not an actress. We've been down that road. So should we get to Atlanta? Now, Hasid, are you an Atlanta watcher? I'm not just an Atlanta watcher. I'm from Atlanta. <gasps> so am I. Uh, are you really? Yes. Uh, but then, no, I live down the street from Chateau Charest and you Kenya. Did. Yeah, you did. I've, I've seen both. You tell us, tell us, what is Chateau Charest offering up from the curb? Chateau Charest from the curb, it just looks like a medium sized house that has been inflated. You know, it's not rambling. It's not like room after room after room after room after room. It's like a normal sized medium house. <laughs> They're not, it's a medium sized house that's just like yeah. huge high ceilings. It's almost more tall than it is wide. Did you see furniture inside? I d- I've not been in. Not okay. Been in. And, and you, it, you're also like looking up from the street and then you're looking. Okay. And guys, I also have to say my mom, don't, don't get too excited, had a tiny cameo um, in season two of Real Housewives. What? what? Of in Atlanta? Oh my God. This is huge. What? This is, it's, it's so not for radio or podcast, but when Sh- Sheree goes to get her portrait done, her big portrait unveiling. Of course. They go and there's okay, almost like a showroom of portraits where he's like, these are all my different styles. And it's like all these presidents. It's like Lincoln. It's Washington. It's Theodore Roosevelt. The fourth portrait is my mom. No! My- <laughs> is Mrs. Sullivan? Yes. The Hall of Presidents. Wow. And why was your mother there? Was Had she had hers done? Is she a person of... She just had her portrait done. So, um, uh, yeah, it's... Does your mother belong on the show? She does. Like? My mom would be a, a great auntie, I gotta say. But it's it's season two, episode nine, like around. That's an Easter egg. And when I tell you, <laughs> our listeners will be looking. Oh, up they'll find it. Wait. Don't you? Worry. Honestly, Hall said, Danielle, we've never been in the position. I don't think we've ever known anyone that we could recommend. But I do feel I could get an audition tape to the higher ups. <laughs> For my mom? <laughs> I yeah. don't want to brag, yeah, but for real, <laughs> but for real, they're always looking for talent. Yeah, yeah. It's she's more like Cynthia Bailey's mom's generation. Like I'm, I'm that. But the, I'm not opposed to seeing that generation yeah. on the Housewives. I not mean, I will say Karen Huger, though she looks great, she has an older feel to her. Like she is, you know, sure. Kathy Hilton. You know what I mean? We're t- we're getting elder women into the <laughs> into our universe, and I'm happy to have them there. Yeah, I really. Am. Think think like Barbara Bush. Like that's the age, <laughs> you know. Okay. But okay. Not in the okay. Moment, but. but you know what? Like uh, age is but a number. <laughs> And I, I'm willing, to, I'd love to see her out on the town and see, uh, you know, if we can make a little audition tape. Yeah, okay. So Halstead, yeah, where are you with Atlanta right now this this whole season? How how have you felt about it? No, Nini, what do you think? You know, I, I have liked the season. I feel like I'm giving a lot of the seasons a pass because of COVID. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like every season did have their murder mystery and every, like all these local trips on the bus and all of that. You know? <laughs> yeah, a lot of bus trips, <laughs> especially bus in trips. Dallas. Um, the Bolo episode was probably the most exciting of, mm-hmm. you know, of, of all time. Mm-hmm. And his reaction and the tale of Bolo was a little bit too much. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, Porsche's single. She can do whatever she wants. Um, Honestly, they can all do whatever they want. Well, like, yeah. As I, well. Yes. Yeah. And I, I do want to do Where's Waldo for Tanya because she like. Where is disappeared. Tanya? <laughs> Where the fuck are you? Right. Where's Tanya gone I, to? That's what I was missing. I was like, we need Tanya here. She did not want to confront the demons of the night of Bolo. She is because, you know, she was invited and she said, no, she has. Her I feel up. like her man was like, you go on there. We're done. She's up in Canada hiding out. Yes. Yeah. But, you know, Candy always delivers. I love Portia. Um, I I do want to talk to someone and just ask why Shamia is on the show. <laughs> you know, I so I appreciated Mi- Shamia in the mix of Bolo, but beyond that, and at the pumpkin patch, she said something a little funny. But beyond that, I'm ready for Shamia to exude. Yeah, I mean, she found out about um, Marlo's lipo, 
but you yeah. know. But she's carrying, she's taking that. Like, those are just tra- trails yes. that lead to nowhere. Right. I don't really care about Marlo's lipo lie. Like, it's, yeah. it, it, none of that matters. But I do, I mean, it's funny, but then, like, to make it a thing, it's not a thing. It's just a funny, funny <laughs> tidbit. What right. do you think of Drew? Thoughts on Drew? Drew, I really like, you know, because Drew came in and she's not putting on pretenses. She, um, she seemed very open to the ladies. I, I felt sorry for her that Ralph? Toya was coming straight in for her. Well, well no, there's, there's the whole Ralph thing. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> which many questions about Ralph and Tampa. But um, it, it felt like LaToya was like, oh, we're both the new girls. I need to like one up you. And she just came in for her hard. But she picked the wrong person because Drew's so friendly and nice. It only made Toya seem like, and we've had a couple housewives like this in the past. Like, honestly, Daniel Staub was coming to mind where someone is just so mean and aggressive. I'm just like, I find no love in my heart for you. Like, you're a bad person. Drew is so clearly to me sweet and fun and was willing to have fun with the autograph photo. Yeah. And here comes a woman telling her to her face and continue to do so in the reunion twice saying your wigs looked like trash. But for, That's and so from mean. nowhere, too. It's like it, they didn't earn that. Like when Marlo says something like that or Kenya says something like that, you're like, well, they've kind of earned it because they've had really expect they, they they have a history. They're, you know, like it's almost like family fighting and you go low or you go to certain things. But she came from out of the blue and yeah. started saying that shit. And it just felt it felt sweaty and it felt unnecessary. And so though I do like her, I find Oh, and I want her back. Oh yeah, yeah I, want I want her, her back. back. I think she's beautiful. She's fun. I she just She is fun. To see a possible romantic relationship with her with her and Kenya, she really brought us something. But I'm gonna make an announcement, guys. Reunion part one, when Kenya I, it honestly like it really almost makes me cry to talk about it. But when okay, this is hard to talk about. When Kenya came for Drew about her mothering. I, I've released Kenya and I've turned on her for good. I was bawling on the couch. I, when she was like, how can you say this about me? Like, you know, I tried to do the best I can by bringing, you know, my ex into the life to be with my son. And Kenya's like, I just think you're a bad mother and a bad example. And I think it's disgusting and kept going after her. And Drew was crying. I'm like, Kenya, you're fucking dead to me. Done. Yeah. I love Drew. I just thought that was so mean and so disgusting. Yeah. Kenya and her canned lines, too. At every reunion, you can just tell when she's delivering her, you know, debate zinger that is supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think she's getting those written or she's prepared them? I, I, I'd say she's clever enough to have prepared them. Yeah. And also they okay. they land like such a thud that it's it's her or else she needs to <laughs> writing them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. OK. Yeah, Toy, I do. I do want her back. I did like seeing her again in that fish net, you know, when she was like a trapped fish, like as her. (laughs) (laughs) I like really made me laugh. I don't know why. I just love seeing it. And I like when Candy dubbed Andy for his, um, you know, his name in the bolo party as Silver Bullet. Candy's always solid. I liked when Portia yawned when Marlo came out. I thought that was a nice, subtle, subtle Mm-hmm. jab which i enjoyed. gorgeous yeah um i i think everyone was serving fashion at that oh, yes reunion as well um except i i don't want to go after shamia again no. but like she looked like <laughs> she, like stealing dalmatians yeah. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you really hate shamia you really hate shamia. <laughs> I hate shamia and i i understand why i guess yes, i'm her latoya like what can i say you are <laughs> her, <laughs> her latoya <laughs> um can we also talk about when um when Portia was talking about Toya going down on her basically and she's like, but I don't remember it. She was like, but she went down on me. Like it was wild. And I kind of give these women props because it doesn't seem like I know Portia doesn't love Toya, so it's not like they have this great relationship, but there didn't seem to be a too many like uncomfortable moments surrounding that. It was just like, Oh yeah, that's another thing that happened at a party and and we still have our issues, don't get yeah, me wrong. But, but that doesn't seem me. to factor in. But that's why I hate what Kenya, Kenya was doing, doing because I have I love when sexuality is just a, a, a beside. You know, it's like I love that they were so comfortable in their sexuality. It was so sexy and fun and silly and wonderful. It helped me feel really great. And there wasn't shame around it. And what Kenya was trying to put around it was shame. And I didn't want it there. And it bummed me out so much. 
Um, and so I love that it was just like, yeah, she went down to me, no big. And then she was like, but I don't think she actually got in there. And then Toya was like, well, I could have just moved the panties aside. And she's like, yeah, you're right. Like, it was just so, it's just... such a cash <laughs> convo that I appreciate yeah. that so much. Yeah. Or if Kenny's going to be like that, don't go to the bullet party at all. Yeah. You know, let, let it be a safe space. That's right. That's right. Uh, I think I love Atlanta. I'm going to miss it, but we've really got a lot coming towards us now. We've got Potomac, we've got Beverly Hills. And I, I feel like those are fun summer, summer franchises for us to really like sink our teeth mm -hmm. into. Are you excited Halstead for Beverly Hills and for Potomac? Like, are you? Oh, always, always. Um, Potomac, I think right now, well, no, New York's my favorite. Potomac's probably my second favorite. Um, Beverly Hills, I'm, I'm interested to see Kathy Hilton. She's not exciting. I want to see the house. I, you know, I want to hear her. I want to see that bucket hat. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> see how she moves through the world. Uh -huh. See, my fear with Kathy is she's not going to get drunk and let down her guard. Never. Not a, not a, not That's once. my fear with her. Like, I would respect it more if, like, we were saying about Lee and Lou, it was a, the source was alcohol problem. <laughs> this is just Kathy probably being a stick in the mud. So I, I want to see what happens there. I just did Garcelle's podcast, and I have to say, I asked her, I'm like, what do we got? What do we got coming? And she said to me with so genuinely, she's like, we've got something coming. Mm. So now that's all I have to report there, you know, but it is something. And I don't know. I, I Let's see what happens. But I once again, if Erica doesn't bring it, I'm going to petition for her to be off yeah. the show. And I hope you'll all join me and stand with me. I can't believe we, I didn't even mention the Erica. Like, that is just going to be fascinating. Like, she fascinates me. The, like, the fact that she's still recording during all this is amazing. Like, there, there's something to look forward to. The main thing I'm looking forward to, of course, is the all-star season. <laughs> yes. The videos that have that are being released, the content that is coming out of Turks and Caicos when <laughs> Melissa Gorga posts a video of all the gals in a line. If you haven't seen this, you must. They're all in a line and they do that thing where like that really sad like middle school dance where like you kind of move to the left, yeah, revealing the woman so behind right. you who moves to the right. And everybody's looking sexy. I mean, even Teresa's like bringing it. And then Ramona, pale as hell in the middle, just an auntie dancing oh, with these it women. It was tough to watch. She was, she looked like she was doing the monster mash. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like doing the mash, the monster mash, like just like hands akimbo. <laughs> <laughs> and what a crew we've got. We've got Kyle, uh, Lou, we've got Kenya, Cynthia. Do we know when these, this footage is coming? Because I think they were only there know. for like a weekend, it seems. And right. Oh, OK. I thought this was a full season. So on Peacock. So we got a. it's like a new thing. We're going to have to wrap our heads around, you know, because the real Housewife seasons are like 27 episodes. <laughs> I know this is going to I maybe we'll get five or six, but I think it was just a long, a long forgotten weekend for these women because they're home. They're back. God, I need to know how they picked these women. And now I did hear from a higher up, as I said, Danielle, there has been a fight that has already started to brew. I love it. Between an, uh, two, an unlikely pair, unlikely pair, which is Kyle and Cynthia Bailey. To me, that's the two normals going head to fucking head. That's um, intriguing. Intriguing. Sorry. Intriguing. Wow. Halstead, do you have anything else you want to bring and add? Um, no, uh, I will say this. I will say for in Atlanta... Marlo, to me, earned her, her peach until the reunion when she came loaded for bear and pulled out a BB gun. Like, she's <laughs> this really weird energy at the reunion where she, you know, she mm -hmm. seems like she has something, but she doesn't have anything. And it's like, stick the landing. Stick the landing, wow. girl. Wow. Wow. I mean, I, her outfit was gorgeous. Unbelievable. <laughs> I loved no, it. I didn't like Candy's gloves, and I'm just putting that out there and leaving it there. But I... Uh, I I want Marlo to have her peach. I just wonder if she's too explosive. I don't know what's going on there and why she can't get it. Yeah. Do you miss Nini? Um, I do not miss Nini because it, you need some highs with the lows. And I just feel like she was, mm. you know, at least in the last season, just just a drag on the group. You know, like yeah. she did, when someone doesn't want to be there, it's a drag energetically for all of our exactly. spirit. And when they're producing in their head as they're speaking, like there's an in office in authenticity to it. Yeah. Except for Candy, who can produce the fuck out of a show. Yes. I will say. She's producing, but she's, yes. but we're not there for her drama. We're there for her producing on some level. So yeah. it yeah. makes sense. Hall said, I feel we didn't really even scratch the surface with you. So I'd like to already ask for you to come back another day. He's so honored. We had to do a short app. Um, 
but I'm so happy you were here. And I, I just want to extend my hands across the globe to all of us who got to see the premiere. It felt fun and felt fresh. I felt everyone with me too. I felt like we were watching in unison and that's nice. And I felt people that are here and those who have passed were watching. Mm, yeah. Th- those are big numbers. Yeah. I just big felt numbers energy. from beyond, I hear. Big. And I hope <laughs> those same people are buying my book from the beyond. Yes, congratulations. We'll have to get the, uh, the audio <laughs> Thank version. Thank you. Oh, my God, guys. Thank you. Uh, Halstead Sullivan, you're the best. Where can people find you? Um, or do you not want them to find you? Buy my pool. (laughs) (laughs) Buy your pool. But you can watch Central Park. You can watch Central Park on Apple. Uh, the new season comes out in June. Season one is already available on Apple TV plus. The first two episodes are free, so you can even check it out for free without subscribing. So we'd love for you to check it out. That's wonderful. Lovely. You're the best. You're such a great person and you're funny as hell. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Hosted. Thanks so much for having me. And I'd like to thank, of course, my glam team. Yeah, thank Kathleen you. Cody. I would like to thank them too. They moved seamlessly and silently. Yeah. They really were impressive. They really took me from day to night. <laughs> <laughs> I am very impressed. Uh, Last thing I will say is um, if you're listening to this tonight, uh, you can still get tickets to see Adam Pally and I in conversation about my book. Of course, our guest is my father, (laughs) Paul Wilson. Um, Love you all. Again, thank you for getting my book. Love you, Danielle. And a huge thank you to you. Love you, too. Okay. There's no thank you there. Okay. Um, Thank you, Renee and Caitlin. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, Renee. Thank you, Halstead. We love you all. Goodbye, all. As promised, please enjoy this excerpt from our live show in which I am confronted by a a gal from high school that I uh, behaved poorly around and toward. Enjoy. Danielle, why don't you actually take take this, the lead on this? Because we asked for some boots on the ground and something really weird happened. Yes. So we Uh asked for some boots on the ground and I got an email from a woman named Elizabeth, who is a podcast listener. And she said, speaking of boots on the ground, I don't have one for a housewife, but Mm -hmm. I do have one from some bad behavior from one Miss Casey Rose Wilson. And I was shocked. And so I wanted to get to the bottom of this because I felt like this was the good time during when we talk about housewives' bad behavior and their boots on the ground. Why aren't we open to it ourselves? We should have to come clean ourselves about our behavior. You know, if you're going to buy this... So do I have to have this, please? No, I have not had contact with this person in 20 odd years. I have not had contact with her through this process. Yeah, I have to say there have been... You know, Casey and I always said about our time in New York together, like there's bars we can't ever go back to. There are people we can never. Well, this is a person I don't know that she can come back to, and yet we are. And this is sort of a red table talk, if you will. One of my favorite shows of all time. Um, This is our red table talk. Let's Let's get into it. And so I'd like to bring out Elizabeth, who was the person. The friend. Yeah, we have the the friend of the person um, that. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hi, 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 Elizabeth. I really wish I could be joining you under different circumstances. So do I, Elizabeth. So do I. But I feel it's my duty at this moment. Um, Elizabeth, are you... Are you, are you the the victim? No, she's not the victim. She is the okay. friend that got in contact. And tell me what you said, a brief version of what you said to me, basically. Brief version is that earlier in the year, when you re-released the episode of the Teacher Appreciation Luncheon Committee mm. email thread drama, I mm-hmm. forwarded this to my best friend, Allison. Mm-hmm. Allison okay. was born and raised in Bethesda, Maryland, so I thought she would get this little kick out of it. And then I get a text back saying, wait, is this Casey Wilson's podcast? Didn't know that they um, knew each other. And when I inquired further, she said, oh, did I never tell you that my first boyfriend left me to date Casey Wilson? <laughs> well, but no. that's not on Casey. I mean, then, where is then, it? I'm going to ask thus, some follow-up thus, questions, okay? Um. She I mean, later who learned. Amongst, how many of us wouldn't leave our boyfriends for Casey Wilson? <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I don't blame Casey. Go on, well, let me Elizabeth. ask Casey. Wait, wait, I want to ask you okay. a question. Did you know that this gentleman had a girlfriend at the time, Casey? 
you know, I didn't not know. Um, I I knew he was intertwined pretty heavily, okay. pretty serious. <laughs> um, and look, things began. This isn't, I'm not proud of this, you know, and I think right now in today's world, you know, we're so quick to just cancel. And, and, and I think I'm appreciative of this moment to heal. And I'd like to see this, this person. Now, before we begin, I also want to say that the audience is calling this the red towel talk instead of <laughs> <laughs> This is red towel that. talk. This is the red towel talk. This is the red, red towel, towel <laughs> draped over the treadmill. Now, I my hands are shaking. Okay, so thank you, Elizabeth, okay. for informing us. Elizabeth, and now thank you. Say so I thank you. you. And thank we are you. going to bring on the injured party. And we're not saying that Casey injured this person, but we, we are. Harm, we harm did. occurred. Yeah, harm but occurred. But, so thank you, Elizabeth. And I would like to bring on Allison now, if we could. I'm so scared right now. I hope oh, the tech fails. Be okay. And again, I, I hope think the tech fails. I do too. <laughs> this would be a great time. What's happening? I gotta take a sip. I gotta take a sip. Oh, we all have to take a sip. I gotta take a sip. Hi, okay, Allison. Allison. Hi, I I feel like I need to join the party. Yeah, take Hold a on. sip. Take another Whoa. sip. Um, take another sip. Hello. <laughs> Hi. You're as gorgeous now as I remember you. Um, I, I've when I've I enjoyed even... watching your career flourish. I it's, <laughs> you haven't seen me in 25 years. I've certainly seen you. However, Hi, Allison. I yeah. you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Allison, do you want to just quickly tell us your version of events? Because, you know, and yeah. I, I would like an opportunity to respond and, and hopefully lift you up a bit. Yeah. I is this, So I should say I have never seen um, Real Housewives of any sort. Is this like something they do? Is this like, are we like... There's a bit of take? a reunion episode. Yeah. It's a, it is receipts. a reunion episode. These yes. are receipts, if you will. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, I'm happy to be a part of that. Um, so I was 15 years old and my first boyfriend, uh, was very special to me. We, we dated for two years, which is a long time for a 15 year old. And, um, you know, it was his senior year of high school. I was a sophomore and he was, he, I think he was ready to leave. He was ready to move on. Didn't know how to break it to me. Um, he and Casey met outside of school. We went to the same school and she went to a different school. And I was hearing about all this fun he was having with this other group of people. And in fact, I don't, Casey, I actually met you at a performance of this thing that you did together. What does it say? Remind, can we tell us what this thing yes. is? So this is like an old timey Christmas show. And I, it's called the Christmas Revels. And I, I do have a photo of myself in this gentleman. Um, maybe we could bring it up, Carlo. Uh, there we are. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Carlo. Um, thank you. Bone structures for days, he's got. Yeah. So it was like old timey where you like hold lanterns and you sing Christmas songs. And it and, and that is how we met. And I was in a public school. You guys were in a private school. And 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 go on, Allison. Just tell us what happened. And I, and I remember meeting you and and it was that you were this fun person. And I knew that he was having so much fun with this group of people and did not seem to be having fun with me anymore. And I would say maybe like a week or two later, he broke up with me. And then a week or two after that, I found out from someone else because we went to a school with 10 people in it a little more than that, but it was very small, that he was dating you. And then I think, I'm going to be honest, I'm okay, okay. now. Great life. Thank you. I'm happy where I am. If anything had gone differently, maybe it would have been different. Um, but I did block a lot of it out, I think, um, just because yeah. it was hard for a 15-year-old. Um, yeah. And so I think I learned that you two had gotten together a little bit before he let me go for good. It was an overlap. It was an overlap. Um, yeah, it was a bit and, of an overlap. Right, right. And, that, and and then and then he left. He went to college, and I moved on with yeah. my life. Now, Allison. A Allison, can I just pipe in for one second? Because I do want to hear Casey's side of events. But it looks just by the sheer amount of books behind you, it it does look like you're doing well. That you're well rounded. I married well a very well read man. I'll, I'll oh, those aren't you your that. books. And those I'm just not. doing a quick scan oh. to see if Casey's book is anywhere, an advanced <laughs> copy is anywhere. Or <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 
<laughs> not yet. If you'd, if you'd okay. like to send me one, but happy to means. send you. We'll be sending you one. Okay, great. Our Thank consolation you. prize. What I would like to take a second to just say to you is I am very sorry for real. I do feel badly and I've always hoped I would never run into you. And that's just the truth. I just, in my head, you know, you have a couple of people you're like, I really hope I don't see them because I feel I'm ashamed of my behavior. And, and so I am truly, truly so sorry. And I'm, I'm shaken and I know how bad that pain is. I had, and this is no excuse. Now I, I in the house, I like to have an apology with an excuse right there. But I will say, you know, I had had another boyfriend. <laughs> And he had left me for someone. And so sometimes hurt people hurt people, but that doesn't make it right on any level. And I will say, I came to see you in a musical. She loves me. And I said to myself, she's a much better singer than I am. Wow. That takes a big person. to. <laughs> and I, I didn't say it to Chris, but I said it to myself and you were, and I was like, oh, she's so beautiful. She's so nice. And I felt that from afar. And I really do apologize to you. Truly. That's bad behavior on my part. What well, is bad behavior? Thank you. I'm, I am actually trying to drill down Casey. You are apologizing for. Well, I knew he had a girlfriend, June. I knew he had a girlfriend and it was wrong. We should, we could have waited, you know, we could, we, it was bad. June. It, was, it was a bad situation. And so, yeah. But what about your point? Oh, go ahead, Danielle. I was going to say, but you weren't the only one with bad behavior. And thank there was you, Danielle. There's another party involved. The, some would say the guiltiest party involved. Now, Allison, we have another person that's about to come out. I I thought there was like probably a seventy five percent chance of that. Yeah, which is actually good because I was feeling kind of bad. I was like, our moms still know each other. Like, is that? And he told me your moms are still in contact. Let's just bring Chris out and let's just, we'll air this quickly and we'll move on. But I think these are healing conversations. I have not seen Chris. <laughs> 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 20 plus years. Oh my God, this is too much. I'm, uh, I, I'm, oh. I'm glad we don't have a live audience because this is the point where like I'd be getting booed, right? Y no, I don't think anyone's going to get, no, no one, one's you're booing me. Very well I mean, received. You're being okay. both of you. You're are being lovely. very well right. received. Everyone is saying he's good looking. And now some people are booing because you asked to be booed. But that is because Thank you. Thank you. Good. It, it, it feels appropriate. Yeah. You're um, only being booed. Yeah. I just have to throw out there. I am going to call you Kip. Uh, just, that's, that's, that's I think funny. it is important, yeah. Allison, thank you, to note that your name was Kip at the time. Yeah. Um, now, let's just look at a quick, one quick photo of you two back in the day, if, if we may. Oh, oh that's cute. Wow. Chris, Kip, do you have anything you want to say to Allison or anything you want to say on our behalf? Because as a feminist, I do think, you know, it was both of our faults. And I'm completely genuine, though, when I take responsibility and say I'm sorry. Do you have anything you would like to say? Yeah, I do. And first, Allison, it's great to see you. It's been Hi. Uh, and Casey, it's great to see you, I too. Have to, I have to go. I don't know if we can stay for this. It's bizarre uh, in this situation. But, but, uh, but Allison, I do, uh, I, I, uh, I'm here in the hopes that you'll accept my, my heartfelt apology, just a mere 23 years late, um, but who's counting, uh, for ending our, as you said, two-year relationship in a way that really wasn't befitting of, uh, for, for what was such a, a wonderful, meaningful, special relationship. So, wow. I hope you can accept my later apology. Yes. Thank, thank you. Um, I'm, you know, I, I do hope everybody understands. I, I've moved on with my life. <laughs> and, uh, you have so many books. Of course you have. Of course you have. Uh, you no, know, but that's nice. And I, Danielle, in my email to you, I had said, I hope that if you have any 15-year-old, 16, 17, 25-year-old listeners out there who think, I'm never going to get over this, my life has ended, they too may be able to have this kind of Zoom national television radio reunion of healing. This is available to anyone who wants it. This is available. And I never want, want this. On, I never want my, any my of this. To red towel talk. I am so, I never, I want to get out of Red Towel Talk. I don't need any of this ever again. I'm so comfortable with past harms staying hidden and never looked upon. 
I know. I just feel good. Just to be clear, I had nothing to do with this. I've never seen Real Housewives or know about the podcast. This was Elizabeth, and I knew it meant a lot to her. She loves this podcast, and she said, "Can I tell this story?" And I said, and "Of course." Kind of, you know, that's why not? wonderful, Allison. You know this. We we are not on the Real Housewives or yes. on the radio. I just wanted to be clear about that. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah, whatever. Podcast, whatever rate, this is, all who cares? Above. It's nothing. We're yeah. old, right? Casey, you said everyone in the chat is too too young to remember I some. Yeah, oh, yeah, Irma Bombay. Yeah, exactly. I, I remember. We're old. It's okay. We, we are. Not that old. Thank you for coming. I do apologize, Chris. Thank you for coming, both of you. That was a very nice, heartfelt comment, Chris. And thank you both. We are so happy and thank you and grateful that you came on. And I do feel like there was some healing that happened. Yeah. Jim doesn't feel that way. That's okay. But, but uh, <laughs> my husband is banging on the door to come in. I Hold on. <laughs> oh, no, Casey's husband is banging. <laughs> Casey, you must come back. Casey, do not leave us here. Come back right at this moment. Casey, come back. Come back. Come back. Come on in. How dare you? Casey, I am. Um, husband is um, now Casey Davis. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Tippy. What? Hello. Where I am, Chris. I think the big winner, Chris, is your wife, Sarah, who landed you, and Allison, your husband, and we're all married now. And I hope this has been healing for everyone. This and is, it, it has not it has healed me. Jim. Yeah, I'm left yeah. a wreck. I'm, I was better before this happened. I was better off. I feel like the big winner to, to have had such wonderful women in my life. So, oh, wow. I mean, this yeah, guy, I get, it. I get it. I get it. I get it, Casey. And I get it, Allison. He's a real bullshitter. <laughs> and Allison and Kip, and Kip slash Chris, thank you for being here and doing thank this. You. And thank you, Elizabeth, for this healing moment. Allison, call me. <laughs> David, how dare you? Never. David, Casey, how dare you? Casey, I'm going to need to spend. David is yelling, there's only one way to get even, Allison. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Casey, Jesus we're going to, unfortunately, I know we have other things to get to. We're going to need another hour to discuss <laughs> what just happened there. <laughs> We're gonna need another hour. I don't know why you apologize. I'm sorry. I don't. I don't understand what's happened. I don't understand what's happened. I feel crazy. Um, okay.